Metallica's Dyer's Eve. Let's take a look at this beast today. To play it exactly as it appears on the album, there's quite a few little nuances that we're going to have to talk about. So let's jump right in and I'll try to keep it easy to follow for you. Um, we're in standard tuning. And the first thing that you hear right off the head of the track is this chord progression. <laughs> Okay, and that chord progression is gonna repeat a few times here at the head of the track. Um, but let's just take it measure by measure here at first. So you hear this. And all that is is two, three, two, three on the A string, palm mute that. And then we're gonna go down to the low string, hit a low E, and then alternate that with an F power chord, so full power chord there off the first fret. Okay. That's how he's pulling that off. Now we get into this chord progression. E to F, E, G, E, F, E. Okay, so let's just slow that down for a second for those of you that aren't familiar with those. E, open E power chord. F, power chord on the first fret there on the low string. Back to E. G is on the third fret of the low string. Back to E. F on the first fret there again, and then back to E. Okay, so that's the chord progression that's gonna repeat a few times here. Okay, uh, after the first time, play the same chords, just ring them together rather than stopping them. Okay, and we get into that just E, F, quick E, F, power chord, palm mutes. And then just play through those chords. Same as before, ringing them together. And then, okay, we're gonna play the same chord progression, but now we're gonna put two muted strums in between each chord. Okay, so alternate that low E palm muted string with the F power chord and then do that chord progression with a couple of dead chucks there between each one. So you're just gonna lightly lay your fingers down across the strings, don't push them, but just lightly touch them. Just create that dead sound and put two of those uh, between each chord. That, that time through the chord progression, we're gonna put two more chucks at the end and just one single uh, open to one. Okay, and then go through the whole chord progression again with two muted strums. That time put in zero one, zero one on the low string. Okay, the first time we had, right, we had two muted strums, zero one. This time it's just zero one, zero one. And then we go through the whole chord progression twice more putting two E palm mutes between each chord, but it's the same chord progression. So. Right, so we just end with a 0101 ringing E power chord. Right, so it's not that bad. It's just the same chord progression over and over. You just have to really nail all the little nuances that are happening every rotation, right? If you want it to sound like the album. Um, so that is that whole intro bit. And I will play it nice and slow for you so that you can follow along and nail all those little things going on.
Okay, so now comes probably the most difficult riff in the song. And this is where a lot of controversy lies between tabs and between different people teaching the song too. So, you know, we are gonna get into this debate. Is it all twos in this riff? Or is it toggling back and forth between the second and third frets there on the A string? But we'll get to that and I'll break it down and give my opinion of what's going on there on the recording. And first though, let's just break the riff down for those of you that might not even know the riff or are just looking for another explanation of it. So let's get up to speed and break the riff down. It's actually pretty simple. All the elements are simple. The hard part is getting it fast up to speed. But all that it is is we're starting on a B power chord. Okay, so B power chord and then six chugs on that second fret. One and a two and a. Then we're gonna come up half a step to the third fret, C power chord, and slide quickly back down to B. Now, I'll get to this in the explanation too. There's a discrepancy here on most tabs, but we're gonna hit the open A, back to the B, okay? The B power chord, that is. So the first measure of this big daddy riff. Okay, and then that just repeats for the next couple of measures. So the first half of this riff. And again, fourth measure, just the last two beats changed. Three and two on the A string, up to five and four on the D string. Okay, and that's the first half of the riff. Okay, now the second half of the riff is almost the same. Start off, the, start off exactly the same. Now there's a little bit of a timing discrepancy here that just shifts it a little bit. We're gonna hold that B for an extra half a beat. Palm mute the open A, back to B. And then the rest of it is the same as the first half, right? So that second half, one and a two E and a three, four and one E and a two E and a three, four and one and a two E and a three, four and one E and a two E and a three and four and. Okay, so there's just that one that in the middle there, the in the middle of that second half, you got to hold that B power chord half a beat longer that throws it a little bit off the, the it shifts the timing a little bit. Okay, so I'll just play that riff nice and slow. So that we're up to speed. And then let's get into all of these, you know, discrepancies that you see online with disputes between what 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 was going on? Was it two and three or just all twos? So here it is nice and slow. So there's the riff, and now if any of you have been studying the song for a while, or if you've watched other tutorials, then you've probably noticed a pretty major discrepancy in how that riff is taught. And even the official tab book does have it different. It's got it. Right, instead of just chugging all on the second fret, it's going back and forth between the second and third frets. Okay, so let's talk about what I believe is going on. And let's just start with what we have available to us, live footage. Live footage, they're just chugging all on two. Now, however, if they had recorded it as two, three, two, three, two, three, I would not be surprised at all to see them simplify that live and just chug on two. So I'm not gonna take live footage as the be all end all you know, source of that's the way that it was recorded, because that's kind of what we're after here, what was on the album. 
And another source of information that a lot of people talk about is this uh, issue of Guitar World magazine from August 2005. And I believe it's page 44 here. Uh, yeah, there's an article by Kirk Hammond himself that talks about how he plays the lightning fast riff in Dyer's Eve. And in this article, he's got that all in the second fret as well. However, the rest of it is definitely not the way it was recorded on the album. So I take that with a grain of salt too, because you have to remember, he's simply telling us how he plays the riff. That is not an indication of how it was recorded, and it's not even telling us how James plays it. Because if you watch live footage, there again, James and Kirk are playing it slightly different. So, however, if you take live footage into consideration and that article, combine it with your ear, I think that we can get pretty close to kind of figure out what was going on here. So, if you slow that track down, it's undeniable that there is a change in pitch every other note, right? Kind of does sound like this. Right? So, well, that's odd, you know, like, why would they record it like that? Well, I, personally, I think it was all on the second fret. Because if you really listen close, that pitch is somewhere in between B and C. Whenever it goes higher in pitch, it's just slightly higher. It's not, it's not hitting that pitch. He doesn't really hit that C until either that brief slide, or at the very end, it's obvious where... When he finally does go to that C on the third fret there, it goes higher in pitch. So, in my personal opinion, that's what was going on. He was shaking the note when he was playing this riff, uh, just to give it more aggression and more personality than it would have had if he had just simply chugged on it with zero vi vibrato or anything, right? And the nice thing about this too is that it works out really easily. You know, you don't is you don't have to think too hard about this. It, you just naturally play it like this. If you start shaking that note, you shake it in time to 16th notes. So you would just naturally do this where your downstroke is the string at neutral, the pitch of B, and then the upstroke would be slightly sharp. It's just a natural thing to do and you don't have to think too hard about that at all. Right? And that also does away with some other issues that I had with the 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three way. Number one, that way is just overly complicated. I think we can probably all agree that that's a more complicated way of playing it. And nobody I know purposely creates complicated parts, right? Everything is usually... A si the simpler way is usually the right way, right? I'm not saying that's all the time, but usually the logical way of playing something is the way that somebody chooses to play it. Um, so that wasn't sitting right with me though, for the main reason that, uh, it seems okay on the surface. You know, if you were in your bedroom and you wrote that riff, it's like, yeah, that's cool. You right. But then, uh, you know, if you have experience recording, the problem comes in when you have to double and triple track things. And then all of a sudden they're not lining up and you really gotta really think one and a two and a, right? And then you gotta really get it exact. And I just couldn't see James doing that. He wouldn't have sat there practicing one and a two and a, like maybe he just wouldn't have done that. Um, so, you know, the, the shaking the note to me solves all the issues that I had with the two, three, two, three way. So try it out. It makes sense to me. And I think that that's what was going on there. Again, you know, the easy way is usually the right way, and that just solves the issue. So if you wanted to play it exactly 100% how it is on the album to get that pitch variance, you'd have to just practice shaking that note, right? Other than that, though, you know, feel free just to get rid of that and play it how they play it. Now, the one more thing I want to talk about that riff, moving on quickly, I don't want this to turn into a 20 minute conversation on was it two, three, two, three, or all two. So let's move on from that. Um, that's my opinion on that. But the next thing in this riff that I want to talk about is the, after that. So now this, everybody that I've seen, like all the tabs I see, just lifts the first finger and then goes back. However, this, if you left your pinky 
Like if you fretted the B, just lifted your first finger, you have this A6. And nowhere in the track is that A6 heard. It's actually, usually you'll hear an open A. Once in a while he snags the open D with that. Um, but nowhere in that whole track did I ever hear the A6. So he was lifting and and either just getting the A or snagging both. I believe that he probably was just going for the open A and once in a while he accidentally snagged the open D with it. But, you know, it's it sounds cool either way. Um, so anyways, that's how you'll want to duplicate it again if you want it to sound just like the album is lift and get either one or two open strings. And there again, I think my ear is proven right um, because in that article that uh, Kirk Hammett had in that issue of Guitar World, he shows it as playing an A power chord back to B. So he's got it as like that. So going to a full A power chord shows that they were trying to go for that sound of an A power chord, not that A6. If that's the way that it had always been played, that's how he would have shown it, I'm sure. Why would you change that? Um, so uh, that's, again, and live footage, that's a discrepancy too, right? Live, they do just hold their pinky there as, as far as all the live footage that I've seen. So you, I'm not saying that's wrong, but if you wanted to play it how it is on the recording, you'd just lift and either get the open A or the open D, okay? So I think we've covered everything that we really need to with that big mama riff. So let's move on into the rest of the track. So we get out of that first fast riff. Okay, so let's just go that far. Getting out of that first fast riff. E power chord. And then three, two on the low string to E power chord. And do that four times. Okay, now that is on beats two and four, so the timing there is just something to be aware of. We're gonna get out of that first fast riff. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. Back on that B power chord for beat one with six more chugs. And then open A string to the second fret twice. Up to the C power chord on the third fret. Palm mute that twice back to the B twice. And now we're gonna go three, two, zero on the low string, E power chord. Okay, so I'll just slow that down for you so that we can get that far. Okay, so now we're gonna do a three, two, open on that low string in between power chords that are coming down the A and the D strings. So we've just did this three, two, zero, E. We're gonna go three, two, zero, E again, but it's on the seventh fret of the A string. Now that three, two, zero, up to the fifth fret, D. Three, two, zero, up to the third fret, C. And do it one more time ending on B there, right? So when that happens really fast, it sounds pretty, pretty cool. Okay, now we're back on that B. And it's just a repeat, right? So hit it that six chugs with the open to the two. Back to the C. And then that three, two, zero, E. And now we're gonna do the same power chords that we had a second ago, but we're not going to do the three, two, zero in between each one. We're gonna do away with that and just come down. Okay, and so we did away with the three, two, zero. We walked down those chords, seventh fret, fifth fret, uh, third fret, back on the B with the six chugs. Open A to the second fret. Then the C, two palm mutes, just one palm mute on the B, and then just a random slide. You can bar the bottom couple of strings, and it's gonna be a beat and a half, right? Because we're coming to that C, one, two, and three, and four, and one. Coming back for that to that B power chord on beat one. So that's quite a bit of information. Let's put this together so far from getting out of that 
first really complicated fast riff that we had. It goes like this. And then from there, we're back into that first main fast riff that we had, and we play it exactly the same as we learned it, uh, all eight measures of it. And then we have one little connecting measure to get into the verse, and that connecting measure is... Okay, and then we're into the verse. That F sharp signals the verse. So that little measure is just E, three, two, zero, two more E's, and then we're into the verse. Okay, so we're just getting out of that fast riff with the little tag uh, measure there. And as I mentioned, we're into the verse at that point. So that was quite a bit of information, right? There's a lot going on in that intro. So before we move on to the verse, I'll just give the uh, intro a nice slow playthrough for you so that you can follow along and not get lost and hopefully it all makes sense for you. Here we go with that. The verse is quite long, but there's a lot of repetition going on, and thankfully we're ringing power chords for a lot of it, so not nearly as challenging as the crazy intro. So the first four measures of the verse goes like this. Okay, so we're starting with a power chord on the second fret of the low string, F sharp. Move up a half step to G on the third fret. Up to an open A power chord then an open E power chord. And at the end of that measure, we're gonna tack on a quick B to C movement. So palm mute the B power chord, and then up to the C power chord. And then a quick hop down to the F sharp there on the second fret to start our next group of four measures, which goes like this. Okay, so again, we're starting on that F sharp. Up to the third fret G. Now this time we're going to reverse the order of the E and the A, so start on the E power chord, up to the A power chord, and at the end of that measure tack on a, a quick F sharp to G movement, and again palm mute the F sharp, quickly off for the G, and then we're going to jump all the way up to the F sharp on the ninth fret of the A string to start our next four measures. But let's just put the first eight measures together just so that we're on the same page here, and it goes like this.
Okay, now we're up here, starting our next group of four measures, or, and we're on the ninth fret, and then down to the fifth fret, D. Come down to the A on the fifth fret. We're not gonna go to the open A for this. We'll go to this one on the fifth fret of the low string, and end on the G. So that last group of four here that we just covered. Okay, then we have. Okay, a uh, quick little measure here where we palm mute a C and come down to B. Okay, and then we come up to C and we palm mute and off there. So two quick little palm mutes on and off. Then we have two measures of that main riff. And then we're just gonna start repeating this, uh, the whole progression that we just had. So we re repeat all of this. And then we have this. back into the main riff. So a little connecting measure here where we're gonna go one and two and a three and four. Okay, so that's down, up, down, 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 up, down, down with a C power chord, third fret of the A string. Right, one and two and a three and four and then back into our main riff and we do the first four measures of the main riff. And all of that stuff, I just played through it nice and slow for you, but it's all elements that was all covered in the intro, right? I'm sure that if you were working on the intro, you're not gonna have any trouble with that. It's all stuff that we, all riffs that we covered in the intro. And then we're gonna get into the chorus. So before we do the chorus, I'll just play the whole verse nice and slow for you so you can follow along and away we go with that. Next riff that we have to talk about is the chorus, so here that is. So the chorus is nice and quick, it's only eight measures long. The first half of it goes like this. Okay, so a lot of E happening here. We've got just open string E chugs, one E and two and three E and four and for that first measure. So that's down and down, 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 down and down, down, down. One E and two and three E and four and. Okay, so E power chord with that three, two, zero walk down. Another E power chord. Pop up to the seventh fret on the A string, another E power chord. So all E for the first two measures. Now come down to D, fifth fret of the A string. Okay, so we're gonna go down, up, down on the fifth fret on the A string. And then 
strike the power cord. Do that twice there. Um, and then go back to that measure of E that we had. Right, just E power chord, three, two, zero on the low string, two more E's. Okay, so that's the first half of the chorus. Nice and slow again. Okay, now we get into repeating. We just repeat the first two measures. Now. Okay, so we have a quick measure of three, four. We come down to the second fret of the A string, just down, up, down on that. Two power chord stabs on C, the third fret there of the A string. Back to B, the second fret, for or that reverse gallop rhythm, 1 EN, 2 EN, 3 EN, 4 EN. So just down, up, down every beat, right? Uh, so the second half of the chorus, nice and slow. And there's the chorus. So just be aware of that one measure of three, four in the second half, right? We go one and two and three and four and one, two and three, four, one and two, three, one and two and three and four and so that that's just a measure of three, four, right? So it might throw you off there if you're not expecting that. Um, but the more you know the song, obviously, the easier it's going to be just to get through all that, just feeling it. Uh, so there's the chorus, and I'll just give it a quick playthrough all nice and slow for you so that you can follow along. Here we go with that quick. So there's the chorus. Now we're going to get out of the second chorus into the solo and we'll talk about the, what the rhythm is doing under the solo here in a second. But before we do that, let's just talk about how we get from the second chorus to the solo so you can navigate your way through that section properly. We get out of the second chorus with that fast riff. Right? And that's an eight measure riff. We play that the whole way through just as we've learned it, except for the very last measure. Our last measure has always been this. Right? But instead of doing that three, two, five, four, we're just going to go two, three, two, three on that A string. Into that riff. Okay, so we get out of that fast riff. Just chugging on that second fret, then go two, three, two, three. And then that open E to F power chord alternating. Just like we had in the at the very very beginning of the track, and then we get back into this riff uh, that we had in the intro of the song with the chucks between. Now in the intro of the song, we played this riff four times, right? Twice with chucks between each chord, twice with the open uh, E palm muted. Now this time we play it only three times and it's exactly the same as the first three rotations that we learned in the intro. So the first time it's got the dead chucks, so. Two chucks with the zero one. Okay, for the at the end of the first time. Second time exactly the same. Except zero one zero one at the end. And then the third time, just E palm mutes instead of those chucks. And then at the end there, there's a zero one, zero one on the low string. Two, three, two, three. Just reversing what we did there. And then that's the last thing you hear into the solo, right? Um, and then away we are into the solo. So that's how you navigate from the second chorus into the solo section. Now let's play through the whole rhythm underneath the solo. And here we go with that.
Okay, so getting the solo up to speed can be challenging. It's another one of the trickiest parts of the song. And, uh, you know... It's the same rhythm as the main fast riff. We just got slightly different frets here that we're playing. So, we're gonna, you know, get into that solo spot. We already talked about that. And then into this riff. Okay, so we're gonna bar the second frets on the A and the D. It's really an E power chord, just minus the low string ringing underneath those. Okay, and then six chugs, just like the main riff. Same rhythm, one and a two E and a. And then, what we're gonna do is pull off on from the third frets on the A and the D directly to your barred first finger on that second fret. So fret the third fret on the A string with your second finger, and the third fret on the D string with your ring finger, and then, Hit those, snap them off to that barred first finger on the second fret, right? And you wanna do that pretty quick. And then open, open A string, or if you snag the open D again, it's not gonna sound bad. Back to those barred second frets, okay? Okay, and then we're just gonna repeat that same concept, just chugs for the first two beats on the next measure. Same pull off thing. Repeat that again for measure three. Measure four. All right, it's just that zero one zero one uh, at the for beats three and four. So chugging on your low string, and then zero one zero one. So there's the first four measures of underneath the solo, nice and slow for you. Okay, then we repeat those four measures exactly the same. Now we're just gonna transpose this up one whole step. So we're starting on F sharp. Same chordal movement is just transposed. So F sharp, second fret on the low string. Right, so hit that stab with six palm mutes. And then we're gonna quickly slide from the third fret G power chord back down to F sharp. Lift your first finger, get an open E, and then back to the F sharp. And then we do that for four measures, uh, with the end of the fourth measure being two, three, two, three on the low string. So nice and slow. Okay, and again we repeat that uh, for on the second fret, just like we did two whole rotations uh, in the open E position. We're going to do another rotation on the F. Okay, so and the last measure of that being on the F sharp is just one E and a two E and a. We have a measure of two, four in there. And then a measure of four, four with that reverse gallop. One E and two E and three E and four E and. Okay, so there's a full six beats there just chugging away on that F sharp. Okay, and then we stick in the first four measures of the verse. So F sharp to G to A to E and then that quick little B to C movement from the second to the third fret. And then we hop right back to the F sharp and do that. Okay, we do that four measures again. The fourth measure again is a measure of two, four, except this time, if you wanna play it just like on the album, the horse, that, that gallop rhythm, the reverse, the reverse gallop rhythm starts one beat earlier. So it's just one E and a two E and, right? It starts on beat two, one E and a two E and, one E and, two E and, three E and, four E and, one E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. There's a whole two extra measures in there of just that gallop rhythm on the F sharp, right? So to put that together from the four measures of the verse goes like this. Thank you. 
And then we get back into the E position riff that we already had. Right, four complete measures there going back to the zero one zero one at the end. And then we hop up and play more chords out of the verse, how we ended the verse with that on the ninth fret, on the A string that is, back down to the fifth, hop down to the fifth fret, coming down to end this on G, um, but unlike the verse where we just quickly stab G, we're gonna hang on this for a while, we're gonna do that reverse gallop rhythm for two measures and then stab. And then two more stabs. Okay. Um, so that's just once you get to that G, 1 EN, 2 EN, 3 EN, 4 EN, 1 EN, 2 EN, 3 EN, 4 EN, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. And there, that's the end of the solo. Into the bridge section, which we will get into momentarily, but I'll just play the whole rhythm under the solo for you nice and slow so you can follow along and nail that. Here we go. bridge features yet another tricky riff to get up to speed but a lot of repetition from bar to bar so it won't take too long to go over we're gonna start by barring the second frets on the a and the d so this is quite similar to how we started the rhythm underneath the solo bar those second frets on a and d and then chug the open low e All right so we have one and a two and a now we're gonna do that same pull off trick from the third frets on the A and the D pulled off to the barred seconds. Open A and D, and back to the second frets. And then just repeat that idea for bars two and three. Now bar four. It's the same thing, we're just chugging on the low E with an open one, open one for the last two beats. Okay, so the first four measures, nice and slow. Okay, next four measures, pretty much the same, just two spots that have a slight difference. I'll play through the four measures first. Okay, you might have picked up on those slight differences. First measure uh, is the same. Now the second measure, we're just, when we do that pull off, we're holding that bar for half a beat longer. Gives it a nice little syncopation over the bar line. That's the exact same trick that that 
the the big daddy fast riff uh, d- does right that main fast one um so then that gets us through the thing uh to the end where we're just going to tack on a couple of f power chords on the upbeats of beat three and four right okay so just counting that second half for you because it can be a little bit tricky is one and a two and a three four and one and a two and a three four and one and a two and a three four and one and a two and a three and four and Okay, so try to nail that because it's a good little timing exercise in itself. Um, so then that's eight measures now. That's the full riff that just repeats another time. And then we get into this. Right, the, it changes to three, four time. And uh, it's an element that we've seen before, but just not quite like this. So we'll go over it. Uh, e, three, two, zero, E. Right, so you play that twice, and then we're going to hit that E power chord again, then 3, 2, right to the E power chord, just getting rid of that 0, and then we're going to go 3, 2, right to the power chord two more times, and then into the verse, so chugging on that low E for that reverse gallop rhythm. And then we've already seen this measure, E, three, two, zero, E, E. And then we're into the verse, okay? So um, that last little bit, uh, just with all the E going on, I'll play that nice and slow, goes like this. And like I said, then we're into the verse. But I'll put the whole bridge together nice and slow for you now so that you can follow along with some scrolling tab. And that pretty much wraps up everything we have to talk about for rhythm. Here we go. And there's all the parts that you need for the rhythm for this beast, guys. Let's get into the solo. So it's a little longer than average solo, and some of the hardest licks to pull off are right off the bat. So we start off with this. Okay, it's a four note repeating thing, and it's right out of the E minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so what we're doing is bending the 14th fret on G, and then up to the 12th fret on the high string, then 15 to 12 pull off on B. Right, very common rock lick. We're gonna play that four times. Now, the speed of the track is obviously pretty fast, right? And that gets very cumbersome to play if you're going to pick every note, right? Like I, lots of times I prefer to p play that lick and pick every note in, except for the pull off, of course. But in this case, 
I actually hammer out of nowhere on the B string. It makes it easier to play, more consistent, right? So that you're not struggling to play it every single time you have to. Like imagine being on stage and having to play this night after night and doing that, right? It's when your pick has to cross three strings like that is a lot of movement at that speed. So what I do is I go down on the G string, up on the high string, and then I actually hammer out of nowhere with my third finger and pull off. So I don't even pick that note. Way easier to get that fast uh, and up to tempo if you get rid of that one pick stroke. So anyways, give that a try. It's definitely not impossible to pick every note, but it's much easier if you can do away with that pick attack. So we're going to play that four times. Then we have another little repeating lick. We go up to 15 to pull off to 12 on the high string down to the B string 15 and back up to 12. And that's another four notes. Okay, we're gonna play that three and a half times. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Okay, we end with that pull off because then what we're gonna do is shift position. Okay, so we're gonna slide up with our first finger barring the 14th frets and we're gonna pick the B and the E string at the 14th fret briefly. And then kind of another little repeating thing, even though it's really brief. We go, you'll want to use your second finger and your pinky for these higher notes as well. So we're going to pull off from 17 to 14 twice, down to 17 on the B string, and then skip up to the 19th fret with your pinky and pull off back to the 14th fret. So, okay, now he's got another 14th fret in there and then plays two more uh, pull-offs from the 17th fret. Okay, now, there's a little position shift here where we wanna jump up. We What we hear on the recording is the 16th fret on the B string, the 20th fret, uh, and then it's just pulled off. You don't really hear a specific pitch, it could be any one of these frets really, but I'm assuming it was probably the 16th fret as well. He probably just moved his first finger up, pulled off from 20 to 16 and slid it up and to bend the 22nd fret, right? So really fast, you don't even really hear that slide in there. Right? Now those notes work because really what we have on the 16th fret and the 20th fret we have notes that if we started on D sharp here on the 16th fret, go up minor thirds. There's that 20th fret. And it resolves to E. It's a diminished seventh uh, arpeggio, right? So if that was intentional or not, I don't know, but it's, it resolves nicely to E, really caps that lick off. Okay, so our first three measures that we got going on so far is this. Okay, bend that 22nd fret twice. Now, we're gonna bar the 12th fret of the G and B strings and then yank up on the bar quite a ways. Okay, if you don't have a bar, then you'll just have to bend the strings. Right, just kind of bend them as high as you can. And it's quite a long time, it's like six beats that we're gonna be slowly bending for. So you can raise the bar for uh, that those six beats. And then we hit that those barred frets again. And you can bend them slightly when you do that. Kind of get that bluesy sound, right? And then, just a very simple E minor, a uh, blue scale run. So we've got barred those 12 frets down to the 14th fret there on D. Then we're gonna go 12 and 14 on D again. Come down to the A string, 14, 13, 12, 10. Back to 12. Bend 12 and release it. 10. 12, 10 down to the 12th fret on the E string, okay?
Now we're getting a little bit faster playing. We've got this. Okay, so slide to the 15th fret of B with your second finger. That'll set you up in position to do this lick. Can give it a little bit of vibrato there because we're holding it for uh, a beat and a half or so. Now we're going to come back to the 14th fret. Pull off from 15 to 14. Down to 16 on G. And then 14, 15, 17 on the B string. 14, 15, 14. Hammer pull there on the high string. So after you do that hammer pull, down to the 17th fret on B, back up to back up to the high E string, but you want to get your second finger on the 15th fret, 17 with your pinky, and then slide to 19 with your pinky. So really slow here for you because the fingering isn't super intuitive. Okay, so once you slide up to 19 with your pinky, then just pull off to 17 to 15, and then 19, 17, 15 on the B string. Okay, so that whole lick. Now we have this. Okay, so what we do is slide into the 17th fret with our pinky. Okay, 17. Slid in there. Now pull off from to 15 to 14. Hammer pull with that 15 and 14 again. And then come down to the B string and just pull off from 17 to 14. Double pick 17 and pull off through 15 and 14. And then back to 15, 14. Okay, so. Then we're going to come down to the G string 16, back up to 14 on B, 16, 14 twice on the G string, coming down to the D string 16, and then 14, hammer onto 16, super brief little vibrato there, before we get into some six there. But let's just do that whole lick, uh, starting from sliding into the 15th fret on the B string with our second finger. Now we have some sliding six there. So what we're going to do is slide with your second finger on the G string, slide into 14. And with your ring finger, grab the 14th fret on the high string. So you're skipping the B string. Move your second finger down to the 13th fret on G. And with your first finger, hit the 12th fret. Come down to the 11th fret on G and the 10th fret on the high string, and then slide your second finger down to the 9th fret on G, ring finger again goes on the 9th fret on the high E string. So those are our four sixths. Okay, um, so then... That's our next lick. So. We're gonna slide into 12 with your pinky, pull off from nine, 10 to nine, repeat 10 to nine, then come down to the 11th fret on G, 10 to nine again on B. Then, there's a little bit of a stretch there going from the 11th fret on G to the seventh fret. Okay, then, we're going to Go nine, seven, six, pull off on the G string. Seven, six, pull off. Nine, seven on the D string. And then nine, seven, slide down to six. Seven, six, slide down to four. Six, four, slide down to two. And then four, two, open, two, four. Okay, so that lick.
Okay, now I know a lot of tabs have that you know, lick tabbed out in position somewhere, you know, around that seventh fret area like this. Something like that, but that, and I've seen live recordings too where he does play a lick in that position, but that's not the way it is on the recording. You can hear him falling down. On the, on the recorded album version, you can hear him falling down that D string. So that is the way it was originally recorded, but you know, feel free to mess around in that position too. So we're starting to get quite a ways into the solo here. And now we have a little bit of a break from the fast, crazy stuff that we've been doing and is easier to pull off. Then we're going to get a little faster there again at the end. But all that we're doing is outlining the harmony with arpeggios. So at this point, our rhythm guitar is playing an F sharp power chord. So we're going to just outline that with an F sharp minor triad. Okay, so we're starting with our pinky on the ninth fret of A, seventh fret of D, sixth fret of G. Hammer up to seven on G, back to six, and back down to seven on D. That's our first arpeggio. Start our next arpeggio on G, the fifth fret of the D string, so st fifth fret, up to the fourth fret on G, fifth fret, and then do a little hammer onto the seventh fret with your pinky. Back to five and four. What we just did there, uh, we're gonna move it up a whole step and start it on the seventh fret of D. Okay, so same thing, seventh fret of D, six and seven on the G string, with a little hammer up to the ninth fret with your pinky. Back to seven and six. Okay, so there's our three arpeggios. Let's just string those together. Okay, then we have a little scale run to finish this off. Start on the seventh fret of G, and then hammer from six to seven. And then go down to nine, seven, five, four on the D string. Okay. Now we're going to get into this pulling off fast up the D string. Okay. It's not too bad. What we're doing is you start off with this first measure by pulling off from five, four, open six times. Okay, and to keep your timing, you'll think quarter note triplets, like one, two, three, one, two, three. So if you think those triplets, trip, uh, let, trip, uh, let, you'll do that over the course of two beats. So trip, uh, let, that's your beats one and two. And then the second half of the measure, trip, uh, let, there's another half, right? So trip, uh, let, trip, uh, let, and that'll get you through the measure. You're just kind of feeling those quarter note triplets. Okay, then we're gonna come up to the seventh and fifth frets pull off to open. Do that six times. Then come up to nine, seven and open. Do that three times. Coming up to 11, nine, zero. Three times. Now to coincide with our measure of two, four, we're gonna have 12, 11, open. Three times. Hitting the 11th fret on the G string. Okay. Um, so that, that little, Actually, I'll string the thing together. I'll do the arpeggios and the little pull-off lick, and then we'll get to the next part of the solo. Here it goes. Now we have another lick that could be tricky to pull off. Sounds like this. Okay, so what we're doing is really playing around with three notes. We've got 17 and 12 on the high string, down to 15 on the B string, and yeah, we're, those are the three notes that we're playing with. Now, I'll just show you a simple way of thinking about this. Really, you could play a pattern and it would sound very close to the album, uh, and then I'll kind of show you what he's doing because he doesn't stick to exactly this pattern, but this will get you in the ballpark. So if you were to do this, think uh, think that for the first little bit. So 17 to 12 pull off, down to 15 on B, back up to 12, and then 
17, 12 pull off. Okay, that gets you through the first half of the measure. And then the second half of the measure, do this pattern. Okay, so 17 to 12, pull off twice. Down to 15. Back up to the high string. Right, and then if you thought like this, one triplet, two triplet, three, and a four, e, and a one triplet, two triplet, three, and a four, e, and a, right? That would get you through that lick, be pretty close to the album. But to get it just like the album, we start off, you know, he doesn't have that exact timing. He kind of rams it all in there. Uh, it's very improvised sort of lick where it's difficult to play this 100% how it was on the album. Okay, so, but to get it, you know, reasonably close, what we'll do is do that first little pattern. Now, it, it's, you can kind of stick some trem picking in there, right? And that's going to be kind of what you hear on the album where he's playing this pattern that I showed you a second ago, but he's sticking a couple of picks in there. That's kind of what you hear on the album. Like it sounds, it comes across sounding more like that, where we have a 17 to 12 pull off and then another 12 fret that you hear in there before another 17 to 12 pull off. Right, so that first measure, that's, that's what you hear on the album. And then he kind of changes his pattern a little bit going into measure two, he goes like this. He still has triplets, one triplet, two triplet, we could think of them like that, but it's a different set of six notes. We're going 17 to 12 pull off, down to 15, but then you immediately hear 17 to 12 again with an extra 12 in there. Okay, and then he has a slightly different thing that he does at the end too. Pull off 17 to 12 twice again, down to 15 on the B string, back up the high string, then 17 to 12 pull off. And then you hear that 15th fret again on the B string last, but I am imagining he's hammering out of nowhere on that as he's bringing his tapping hand over to start tapping. It's just, once you get that up to speed, it's a very natural thing to do just to keep that hand going and hammer down onto that string again. Then you're gonna bring your hand over and start tapping 19 while you're pulling off between 12, uh, 15 and 12. And, and that, well, the, really the only thing that matters there is keeping the tapping finger going one and two and three and four and one and two and. It's gonna be six beats of that. One and two and three and four and one and two and ending with a 22nd fret bend. Okay, two 22nd fret bends. And that's those bends are super fast because we have to hop back down to that arpeggio stuff again. Okay, so that lick, like to get that exactly as close as we can to the album, it's kind of complicated. But again, you know, I want to stress that's an improvised sort of lick. He just had an idea and he went for it. You don't have to copy that exactly. But if you just have a pattern with those three notes and kind of stick some trem picking in there, it's going to come across as pretty cool. But if you want it to sound the most like the al album, then the thing to remember is that the first half of the measure is a little bit slower than the second half. Like he kind of starts off... Right? He kind of goes slow, fast, slow, fast. If you get that feel, then it will sound more like the album than just like doing triplets the whole way through or trying to ram a whole bunch of 16th notes in there or something. Um, but anyways, that's, you know, I think you probably understand that. Like it's really just three notes, right? And you can kind of mess them around a little bit to make them sound cool. Now, after that, yeah, we've got the six beats of tapping, bend the 22nd fret. We go back to this arpeggio stuff. Okay, a little melody again coming down the D string. So we repeat that F sharp arpeggio that we had the first time this arpeggio stuff came along. So nine on the A string, seven on the D string, six on the G, up to the seven on G, back to six, and seven on the D. Now we're gonna slide all the way up to 14, 12, 11 on G. 14, 12, 11 on D. Come down to the ninth, 11, 9, 7, 9, 7. Okay. Now we're going to trim pick. 
up the D string. So we're starting on the fifth fret. We go five, seven, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. So slow for you. Five, seven, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and end on seventeen. Okay, and then another little cool open string pull off lick. We're gonna start on the B string, eight, ten, eight, open. Seven, eight, seven, open. Five, seven, five, open. Three, five, three, open. Come down to the G string and we're gonna work our way up the G string. Four, five, four, open. Five, seven, five, open. Seven, nine, seven, open. Nine, eleven, nine, open. And that's it. The solo just cuts off right there. Okay, so there is the whole beast. And I'll just slow it down with some scrolling tabs so you can follow along uh, and nail all the little parts. Here we go. So there's the entire track guys. I hope you had fun learning it along with me. I had a lot of fun putting it together even though it was a bit of a beast at times. Anyways, I've got lots more coming so be sure to hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of it and let's become better guitar players together.